right? Oh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Shama Chakra Mano. We're looking at a model from the uh, information and technology aspect of GSC 1 to 1. Um, we are looking at the components of computers, um, where we look at the hardware technology, the motherboard, and its compositions, the computer system model, input devices, storage devices, and output devices. It is believed that by now we have been introduced to, or we already know what computers really are, and. Um, uh, how to at least um, to, um, discuss or outline the history of um, the evolution of uh, the computer system. So here we are going into the computer itself, what it, is, um, uh, what it contains, and what are the components, the hardware, software, we get to see everything. But for now, for week nine, we are looking at these very uh, outlines. Now, the um, computer um, has uh, some components we need to actually uh, take note of. So there are basically two divisions of uh, computer components. Besides the human web, so besides the people where or the human web, we have two major components of the computer. They are the hardware, and the software, okay? We shall continue our studies by looking at the components of the hardware, and much later we'll now get to see what the software is uh, talking about. The hardware is the physical tangible part or component of the computer system. It means um, anything you can see on the computer is um, deemed or called the hardware of the computer. So once you can see it, you can touch it, you can feel it. That was why they said it is a physical or tangible part or component of the computer system. In our pieces, the PC consists of what we call the system unit. The system unit consists of the motherboard, central processing unit, arithmetic and logical unit, memory card, sound card, graphic card, internal uh, data storage, and, and so on. Also, we have the external data storage, which is the keyboard, visual display, uh, that is the VDU, the printer, mouse, and uh, speakers. These are all things we see on the outside. When, we, when they say external, all right? Uh, the laptop computer consists of virtually everything named um, above within a single house, except the printer. Yes, um, a laptop is all inclusive. The VDU is there, the CPU is there, the ADLU is there, and the memory card is there, the sound card is all, graphic card and internal data, they are all in one um, device, all right? But then, we still call them the hardware. As long as we can see them, we can feel them, we can uh, touch them, we call it the hardware, okay? Now, let's look at one of the physical components of the computer, that's one of the hardware, which is the motherboard. Uh, it is actually a, a board that uh, actually helps to, call, to hold some of the, the components of our computer system, All right? In fact, uh, most uh, electronic devices has what we call the system board. Uh, the engineers in other places we call it system board, okay, but in computer we call it the mother board or system board. The mother board consists of several different types of chips. The chip is a set of electronic circuits integrated together on silicon material that can hold large quantities of information or perform mathematical or logical operations. All right, an integrated circuit is a microscopic pathway capable of carrying electrical current. Motherboard contains many different types of chips. Amongst the ch chips are the central processing unit. And the central processing unit is, a, is an integral part of um, 
the computer system. Okay, it is virtually seen as um, the the brain box per se of the computer. Okay, yeah, the CPU, central processing unit, is also known as the brain of the computer. The CPU is the control center for a computer system. It functions. It's it functions, its functions are to interpret, to guide, to direct, to govern most of the performance of the computer system, and to carry out basic instructions that operate the computer. The CPU contains the arithmetic and logical units, it contains the control unit, and it also contains the registers and system clock. Now, these are very, very uh, critical units of the central processing unit. We'll get to see uh, what the functions of each of these units to further understand what we have in the central processing unit. Now, let's start with the control unit. The control unit is the most important part which controls the coordinates and coordinates all the internal as well as external functionalities in the computer. So, this is where the control, all the control system is coordinated from of the computer how you power on your system and the system comes up, how you uh, put off your system, the system comes up, you know, how you shop there and so on. So many other things you need to do with the system. It is the central control unit, of the central processing unit that handles all those uh, activities. Some of the functions of the control unit are as follows. We have one, it controls and guides the interpretation flow and manipulation of all data and information. So any data um, or information that is coming into the computer or going out of the computer, the control unit is in charge of handling the flow, the inflow, outflow, and processing of that um, data or information. Please, uh, I believe the most, um, the, in our previous modules, um, it must have been mentioned that data is already in its plural form. So there's no word like data. You know, data, that's a very wrong um, English. So um, just, I just thought I should point this out uh, you know, so that we don't go using that word um, indiscriminately. Now, the second function of the control unit is that it sends control signals until the required operations are done properly by the ALU. The ALU it's actually another component we we'll get to see, which is the arithmetic and logical unit. So after the control unit, we we'll get to see um, the functions of the arithmetic and logical unit. Three, it gets program instructions from memory and it executes them one after another. So by the time uh, you want an instruction carried out from the memory, Okay, you want to retrieve something and do something uh, in your system. Of course, the control unit handles that. Then the last one controls the flow of data from input devices to memory and from memory to output devices. Now, this is very, very important. You know, normally, why we have fallen in love with the computer is that computer keeps memories, just like human beings it tries to keep memories. So, and those memories are important because we might want to have access to these memories from time to time. We want to use them to do one or two things. In fact, that was why we saved things in those memories. So, whatever you are getting from the memory, uh, if for you to get something in the memory, it means somebody must have put it there, or you might have put some, you must have put that thing in there for it to be in the memory. So, and at some point in time, the, the, the flow of the data from the devices, input devices, we'll get to see what input devices are much later. From the flow of the device, the data or information from the input devices to the memory and from the memory to the output devices, you know, the control unit or coordinates the inflow and outflow of uh, data and information. Now, I'm looking at the arithmetic and logical units, also for short, we call it ALU. The arithmetic and logical unit is a digital circuit that performs arithmetic comparison and logical operations. Now, you see, 
the computer system has a dedicated unit, okay, or the, a dedicated system that helps it to perform arithmetics or very basic mathematical uh, computations, all right? And uh, it also helps, uh, has a, the library unit also handles critical thinking, like all critical or logical reasoning, like when you want to compare two things. Some, this one is better than that one, that one is better than this one, and so on, okay? So the arithmetic and logical unit handles that very uh, function, all right? So the arithmetic operations include addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Remember, here they are not saying mathematical uh, functions. By the time you say mathematics, you see you are going out of the, the scope of the what the ALU can do. Once you say mathematics, it means you might be requiring the services of um, an additional package that will help you do advanced um, computations or calculations. So that was why they called it the arithmetic and logical unit, because it can only handle arithmetical or logical um, computations. While comparison and logical operations include comparing one data item to another in order to determine if the first item is greater than equal or less than the other. So we have an example there where we have A is greater than B, B, A is equal to B, A is less than B. These are all logical um, um, thinkings here. Yeah? Okay? So we have, therefore, the ALU is, is a fundamental building block of the central processing unit of the computer. Now, the third component of the computer is the register and the system clock. The register is a temporary storage location being used by the CPU to hold data and instructions. For the fact that while working on your system, you are able to see what you've been working on, even prior to when that job you are doing is saved, you can see what you are working on. The register helps you to do that. It aids you to see what you are working on. So it's a temporary storage location, all right, by the central processing unit. Then we have the system clock. Of course, once you mention clock, you know we are talking about time. So now this clock coordinates all the timing of activities uh, that goes on in your computer. By the time you carry your system and give to a professional or a system analyst, the system analyst can tell what you did with that uh, computer. Every folder you entered, the kind of work you did, you know, and so on. So that's what the, uh, uh, the system clock and all the timings. When a, a document is saved, there's a time for it. When it was saved, like I, did, I opened my system the other day, I needed uh, docu <coughs> documents I saved um, sometime in 2015. You know, I had to trace uh, the timing of all the documents I saved in my document folder. And I was able to see what I, that was what I used to trace that very uh, document. Okay. Uh, we have the memory. The memory is used to store data, instructions, and information. The main memory of the motherboard stores three basic items. One, the operating system and other system software that control the usage of the computer equipment. Two, the application programs. And three, the data being processed by the application programs. In a computer, there are two types of memories. We have the volatile and the non-volatile. Of course, when you say volatile, you know that it is not stable. There is a very high level of instability. But when you say non-volatile, it means there is some level of stability. Okay? Uh, there is no loss, per se. All right? The contents of the volatile memory are lost when the computer is turned off. I think the volatile, one of the volatile memories um, the system uh, register. Okay, as I explained, if you are working, you need some a memory that helps you to see the work you are doing. So that's a volatile memory. Because once your system goes off, once your system goes off, you've lost everything. That is if you've not saved 
that very job. You lost, you lose everything. But the non-volatile memory is retained even when the system goes off. The non-volatile memory, uh, memory such as uh, uh, memories, things you saved in your hard disks, flash disks, uh, floppy disks, and so on. All the different types of storage systems are non-volatile. Okay, an example of uh, a non-volatile memory is the read-only memory. ROM. That's why your compact disks. Some sometimes they used to call it CD-ROM. So that's because it is read-only memory. Okay, it is a non-volatile memory because you can't just use it like that. Then an example of a volatile memory is the RAM, the random access memory. Again, this type of memory is that memory that helps you to see the work you are doing. But the moment your system goes off without you saving that job, you lose everything. So that, that, that was why we said we called it a volatile memory. Now, the, this is the computer system model. All modern computer system function on the input, process, and output. Of course, model often refers um, as IPO or IPOs, where the S means storage of the processed items. Now you see there is input, there is process, there is output, and now they are even saying storage. Okay, that's another uh, listing. So the input device receives the data from external sources into a computer for process. The process could either be arithmetic or logical, depending on the activity needed. Then the result of the action is sent to the output or stored in the storage. Okay. Now, let's look at what we call the input device, devices. The input devices are equipment used to provide data to the computer system. The input unit is formed by the input devices attached to the computer. Examples are the keyboard, microphone, etc. You know, uh, an input unit takes the input and converts it into binary form so that it can be understood by the computer. We will now proceed to discuss some of the input devices. Number one is the keyboard. This is the most commonly used device that acts as an input device. The standard computer keyboard is sometimes called the QWERTY keyboard because of the layout of the typing area. The structure is like a typewriter. It contains a number of keys that have some specific ASC2 values, like a letter A that has an ASC2 value of 65. When A is pressed on the keyboard, the letter A is converted into value 65, and this is value sent to the CPU in the form, form of binary codes. Then operations are done on this data. Pointing devices. Mouse is a pointing device that contains a roller in space. When the mouse is moved on any surface, the pointer on the screen also moves. So these are examples of um, input devices. They said other pointing devices include the trackball, touchpad, pointing stick, joystick, touch screen, light pen, and graphic tablet. Pointing devices continue. These are just explanations of some of the points, the pointing devices. We have the track wall, it's a stationary pointing device with a ball mechanism on the stop, the touch pad, the pointing stick, a joystick, touch screen, a light pen. These are all pointing devices. Barcode reader is a device that uses laser tapes to read barcodes. All right. It reads the codes of the products, which are usually in the form of bars. It contains a light sensitive detector that identifies the values of the bars of the product and converts them into numeric codes. The barcode reader is commonly used in shopping malls to a large extent. Okay. Um, digital camera. Uh, these are all different devices. Remember, digital camera flow allows one to take pictures and stop the which then can be stored in the computer for further use. Right? We have the scanner. Some of you don't know what the scanner is. The scanner is a kind of electronic device that works with the aid of the computer to help you scan documents to keep the original 
face uh, of of the of the document. You have to, to scan. Okay? There are various types of scanners, including optical scanners, optical character recognition, optical back recognition, barcode scanners, magnetic magnetic link in character recognition. We have audio input devices. Remember, we are listed input devices. Now, we have the storage devices. The storage devices consist of media in which data, sources, and information are stored as the, as the devices that record and retrieve these stored items for further use. The storage device usually refers as, to as auxiliary storage or mass storage, holds data. Okay, instructions and information for that long time as they are made to be non volatile. Remember, we talked about volatile and non volatile uh, memories earlier. Now, some, store, some of the storage devices are listed here floppy disks, as I mentioned earlier, hard disks, compact disks, tape, smart cards, flash, pen drive, redundant array of independent disks, uh, microfilm, microfiche. So on. Now, after input devices, we have the output devices. Remember the model? We have input, process, uh, output. Okay, that's what we are trying to explain here. So now we are on output devices. We said it's data that has been processed or transformed into a useful and meaningful form for information. So once we process the data, it's no longer a data forms and information. Okay. And that information needs to get out you know, for somebody to see. So that's why we call them um, the, the, the device that helps you to do to get those to see those information are what we call the output devices. Okay. We have the speakers, is that an output device? It gives out sound. Visual display unit. The visual display unit is just like the resource your television. Okay. It is also an output device. LCD, that's a liquid crystal display. It's just another type of television. Okay. The screens are used in laptops and notebook sized pieces. A special type of liquid is sandwiched between two units. Okay. The printer is an output device because we print out documents. Then we have types of printer. We have the impact printer. And the non impact printer. The impact printer forms characters and graphics on a piece of paper by striking the mechanism against an ink ribbon that physically contacts the paper. All right? Then the output impact printer forms uh, char uh, characters and graphics on a piece of paper without actually striking the paper. Some spray ink, while others use belt and pressure to create. Images. Now we have types of printers that do not make noise electromagnetic, electrostatic, inkjet, and thermal. Uh, these printers don't make noise. Alright, that brings us to the end of uh, uh, our ninth lecture. And I hope uh, we have been able to get one or two things on uh, uh, computers. Uh, the components of computers, hardware, software, uh, even, uh, yeah, hardware, software, uh, the central processing unit, the control units, the hardware. These are things we covered in the course of uh, our lectures today. All right. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.